Okay, hello. Still not getting viewers. So I suppose um, if my YouTube channel is still up and running after my departure, maybe we'll, people will make my stories and analysis of life known at that time. Um, but I don't know otherwise, you know, why these things happen <laughs> in life <clears throat> as though they could be just for me when I know um, that doesn't make any sense. And why would they be um, for everyone if, in fact, no one is listening? So... <clears throat> It seems to me that the things, the insights given me, because they were of supernatural origin, so it seemed that they would not be for me alone. And so I'm up here um, sharing with um, the public, but not only because they were of supernatural origin, but because of the political symbols that accompanied and that's why, that is primarily why. Because, I mean, like, people can, um, you know, individually experience the supernatural, granted. But when a political symbol accompanies, that seems like it's meant to be shared with all the world. And so that's what happened if you've been following me at all. Um, the fourth session, so I don't have to go over it again because it's traumatic. So just revisit the fourth session, okay? And I've talked about it in various places. And each time I talk about it, I offer um, new insights about life and you know, kind of slip in a little bit more autobiographicals and concerning my life and what I've puzzled out from life's lessons. <clears throat> um, anyways, I this today is my seventh session <coughs> video. <clears throat> A video of my seventh session, that is to say, the, se the aftermath of the seventh session with uh, the Monsignor. And so, um, we went over a little bit of um, the, the apparition of Mary um, in my dream state. And... Um, He's comfortable calling them locutions. <clears throat> um, and uh, he didn't balk at me calling them and calling it an appearance, though, either. So he's open to either, but probably more comfortable calling it um, a locutionary experience. <clears throat> For me, um, my locutions happen while I'm awake and while I was um, sleeping. The appearance of Mary was more like what um, is described by St. Joseph when the angel appeared to him in a dream. So it was more like that and not just a dream. And, you know, Monsignor says that, <clears throat> you know, God works with our psyches. You know, and um, and so certainly the Lord can use our dream state to speak with us. And that if she were to appear before my eyes, as I said, I wish that she would, because she never has. But if she did, you know, he said that uh, that would be a very frightening um, situation. And that's why visionaries are heavily persecuted. Um, he thinks 
it's for social psychological reasons and I happen to think knowing from experience <clears throat> and from what others have stated that it's not just so social psychological a reaction when the visionaries are persecuted heavily for Marian apparitions things get worse before they get better when you start praying the rosary for people things are gonna get worse before they get better so it's better to escape 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 and and stay with your own uh, people of faith because you cannot take on the devil and that's what's happening when you are exorcising people by praying the rosary I remember um, doing that and my persecutor would know when I was doing it but not by any natural social means she would supernaturally know she would start going off on me as soon as I started praying the rosary or reading the Bible especially the rosary I think Man, did she ever go off on me or slandering me unbelievably? <clears throat> and uh, that wasn't because she would have any way of knowing that I was doing that. She didn't start slandering me before I started praying. Every time. Anyways, I believe I almost lost my life over all that. That was torture. And you have to escape. You you can't you can't stick around. The God doesn't want you to stick around with that. So I think that's partly why I didn't escape is because I thought God wanted me to stick around with that. Um, I didn't escape fast enough. Yeah, no, I'm scared for life over that. Um. Anyway. So, where was I? Um. That was age um, 19 or 20. I was 20 when I escaped. So when she uh, appeared to me, she appeared 12 years after I had gone to hell. Right? The office of the Pope repelled me and I landed into hell. Um, so the office of the Pope appeared in a dream state. But I landed into hellfire um, and that was not just a dream. I mean, yeah, you could suggest that, see, psychiatrists have stated that dreams can be so powerful that they're equivalent to hallucinations. Well, if you could say that about the psychiatric state or that you could produce, that your brain could pro produce a hallucination while you're asleep in a dream state, <clears throat> then you can say the other the other has also got to be true that angels and heavenly beings can literally appear in your dream state that those are those are also apparitions well it's similar if not the same like like the angel that appeared to Saint Joseph in a dream so um, I had told the Monsignor that um, <clears throat> um, that when Our Lady appeared, you know, 12 years after the rescue from Hellfire when I was wearing the brown scapular and threw it off, she appeared um, to wake me and I looked outside the um, the window and there was that huge cross of painted moonbeam over a small host of a moon and when I explained this I said that um, she wasn't appearing to me because I was worthy of that because I had been having a mean struggle with borderline rage in my prayer life 
and uh, and she appeared as a mercy, almost a validation with that cross. Well, we worked that out together to realize that the cross. It wasn't just the sign. It wasn't just the symbol or sign to keep my eyes on the cross, or that I'm more in for more of it, or believe in Christ crucified and risen again for you. It wasn't just that, but it was also a gesture of empathy that, yes, what you've been through was a heavy cross. A gesture of empathy. So what he doesn't know is that somebody also had died at that time. It was a police officer who had died at the time. And I was um, praying for him and his soul. And, um, see, I thought that Our Lady was also speaking to that. And then I, I went over the, the following day um, after um, Our Lady had appeared with the illuminated cross. And the following day, uh, what I saw on the, his I saw that his gravestone um, had been erected for the first time. And upon that, that gravestone was the, um, a huge cross going through his name. And then um, on the back of the gravestone read, Beloved Son, always in our hearts. And that was... Um, I believe that the funeral games had either um, begun or or closed on the um, um, feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Or no, it was it was like the first Friday of the month in reparation for the Sacred Heart of Jesus or the police officer who had died. But our, so Our Lady was speaking to our crosses, essentially, basically saying, I'm sorry for your loss. He's with me now. Or, you know, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in his mercy, this kind of thing, because the officer had helped me out with that a particular cross that I was going through at the time. And this was following, um, <clears throat> she, she appeared immediately following the... Uh, my outreach to Ivan Dragicevich in the little auditorium uh, on that same evening or early, early morning. That's why I didn't know if it was the fourth or the fifth. It may be like two o'clock in the morning. It was after I had retired from having visited Ivan Dragicevich in the little auditorium with Father Yozo praying the mass. So, um, so we went over a little bit of that today, and I also showed him the um, Catholic power, or Catholic deliverance power, and uh, he was um, supportive of about 90% 90, 90 of it. <coughs> Acknowledging and calling out these irritating, you know, influences infiltrating the church. He does acknowledge that Freemasonry is a problem. And um, he's a little uh, soft on the fallen angels. He doesn't really, um, I don't think he's one for the St. Michael the Archangel prayer. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the powers of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the other wicked spirits who prowl about the world for the injury of the human race and the ruin of souls. Um, he doesn't believe that we should be um, wishing harm on even the fallen angels. So, um, and I, I believe that he may have perceived the, the speaker to be praying 
uh, in his own words, various acts of violence that I did not hear the speaker pray at all when praying against um, wayward spirits. So, um, so he was critical of the idea that that the speaker was praying against the the spirits of Freemasonry, against the spirits of the Illuminati, or even against the fallen angels. He's, he doesn't think that's appropriate. Um, but that we should be praying for them, and maybe even praying to the Mother of God to protect us from them. So he he's worried about um, the incite the inciting of violence. Even though I said I it wasn't my perception that he was praying against the human beings who are practicing these things, but um, that he was praying against the spirits of these um, cults. And even though he acknowledges the, these cults to be a problem, he says there's no such thing as a, the spirit of Freemasonry and the spirit of Illuminati and the spirit of whatever. <coughs> I said Luciferian. And he said Lucifer has nothing to do with those cults. So he's mistaken. He may just not know enough about it. Um, yeah, but he does acknowledge that they are uh, cults which are a problem and infiltrating the church and that we can pray for ourselves and others to be protected from, protected against those cults, protected from their influence. And, um, <clears throat> And he even went as far as to say that we should not be wishing harm against the uh, the fallen angels. That God gave them the right to coexist. So he's all for that bumper sticker, I would imagine, coexist. It's got all different symbols, including that satanic star. But... I mean, he didn't say that, but it, it almost he's almost lending himself to that, except that he does suggest that we need to pray for ourselves and our loved ones that we be protected against those um, foreign powers because the fallen angels have chosen hell, and hell is their their state. So we don't cast them into hell. Hell is something that they have chosen. But St. Michael the Archangel did cast them out of heaven because they were already in hell. Once they chose to rebel against God, hell was their state. That's how he sees it. What he's um, failing to recognize in this conversation is that... Um, hell is more than just a state of being. It's actually a place, a fiery place in the center of the earth, um, which confines the evil spirits so that they are separated from those who are still allowed to work out their eternal redemption. So to say, to say suggest that we shouldn't be praying against the influence of evil spirits um, is uh, something that renowned clergy before him and po popes would have to correct him on because I believe it was po a pope. Pope Leo that had the uh, the apparition of Saint Michael the Archangel and taught the Saint Michael Archangel prayer as a result 
which is to cast Satan into hell. Now, how, but that does beg the question, how can we cast Satan into hell if he's already in hell? That's a whole theological exploration. Um, um, there's a difference between the state of hell and being consigned to hell. And, and I don't blame him for feeling the way he does, though. I mean, it, it is nerve-wracking. I, I think that I think the St. Michael Archangel prayer is a nerve-wracking prayer. That we find ourselves in the position of casting God's creatures into hell. And find ourselves, you know, training ourselves to be harmful. I think it's a, it's a, it is a scary prayer. Even the Oh My Jesus prayer is a scary prayer. Although it could also be a consoling one. Oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven and help especially those most in need of thy mercy. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.